Welcome back to World Crisis Radio from Hamburg, Germany. We want to repeat now, uh, no sanctions against Libya. This is the most insane thing. The Europeans, again, wanting to prove, strut around with a moral superiority. Uh, not good. Uh, no sanctions. This just uh, creates more uh, terrible uh, human uh, situations. Uh, so the European Union should not do that. That will simply increase the flow of refugees. There are probably enough people who have business in Libya and Europe that they, they won't do it. Now, here we have in Handelsblatt uh, an interesting article by, uh, well, this is a, this is a person who is uh, a um, German journalist of Lebanese origin, uh, Abdel Motalab El Husseini. And his view, the Saudis, uh, Saudi Arabia, the Saudi Arabian monarchy are headed towards collapse. They are headed towards collapse. If the monarchy of Saudi Arabia, who have been against reforms for quite a while, do not bring in a complete makeover of their political profile, there will be a rebellion, a revolt in this oil kingdom. The king of Saudi Arabia is attempting to save his power with various concessions. Now we don't need to go through the details of the uh, of the scenario, but that's uh, Saudi Arabia coming soon. And why not? Uh, they have been uh, rebelling. Right? We saw Bandar attempting to play the Russian card. We saw this clash now between uh, King Abdullah and Obama over the Egyptian question. The obvious thing for the Saudi Arabia, uh, Saudi Arabian monarchy is if they stay in power, they've got to play the, the Russian card, the Chinese card, the Turkish card uh, as much as they can, try to get the U.S. out uh, and the British out. And therefore, they're going to be hit too. And then this begins to become a crisis of world civilization. Again, Saudi Arabia will hit China and Japan and Europe much harder than it will hit the U.S. So you can see the way it's all going. It's... Uh, a general assault on the nation state. Now let's shift gears for a second and look a little bit about the um, economic in implications. Once again, uh, Die Welt is targeting Japan. Japan is a time bomb ticking in the Pacific. Uh, that in Japan, let's take a bunch of countries and say, what is the relation of their public debt to their uh, national revenue, the amount of money that they take in. Well, in the United States, the uh, public debt is about 300, is about uh, three times the uh, amount of revenue that the U.S. government has in a year. In a place like, um, let's see, Portugal, it's uh, the public debt is only twice as much as the public debt that they take in. Let's see if we find another country here. Germany is uh, it's about a hundred and uh, it's about one point eight. So the public debt of Germany is about one point eight times the amount of uh, money that they take in. Japan is almost twenty times. It's nineteen times. So Japan. The public debt is 19 times the income that they have. All right, fine. You know, th th this has a lot to do with U.S. economic warfare, the collapse of world exports back in the 80s. Um, but now we have Moody's. <laughs> Remember, Moody's and these people, these, these people should have been put in jail in September, October 2008, when they were telling you down to the very last minute that Lehman Brothers was a great investment. Uh, Moody's has already downgraded Japan and called their credit outlook negative. And uh, Standard & Poor's uh, had already done that at the end of January. They put Japan down to AA-. minus. So uh, Moody's says, Moody's acted uh, just a couple of a couple of days ago, uh, and they are now down to uh, AA2, but they're going to be re reduced even even further. So uh, you can see now that there might also be a way for the Anglo-Americans to get the uh, credit default swaps ready and attack Japan using that. Now, here's the other thing, the euro. Uh, in our remaining segments, we want to talk a bit about the uh, the euro uh, just in terms of immediate news, Trichet, the head of the 
European Central Bank, the Ber- uh, the Bernanke of uh, Europe, he has had different um, reform plans. I don't think we need to go into these, but he says if you don't accept, if you don't, if the European Commission refuses to accept the demands of the European Central Bank, then the currency union, the monetary union of the euro, is in danger. Um, irresponsible, crazy stuff for the uh, head of the uh, central bank to uh, to do. But now this seems to be going on. The question is what to do about the euro. Now, if you were starting from the situation of 1970 or 1980 or 1990, uh, we would do it in a completely different way. But the fact is we're not. We're now here in 2011, and the euro has, what, 17 countries of the 26, 27 member European Union. What do you do about this? Uh, Do you keep it and reform it? Or do you attempt to go backwards to the mark, the franc, the lira, the drachma, the peseta, uh, and all these other individual currencies of the various countries? Now, there are arguments on both sides. Uh, However, I would argue that it is absolute folly to think that you can go back. You can't go back. Thomas Wolfe rightly called that novel, You Can't Go Home Again. You can't go home again, above all, to the DMARC, because that's the one where the nostalgia is the greatest. And it's very easy. It's an easy, opportunist political racket to say, I don't like the euro. This was bad deal. Let's go back to the German mark. The answer is you can't. Even if you could, you would still be sitting in a world economic depression. Uh, And the German economy, as I'll try to show in a minute, the German economy is in not great uh, situation. But let's look at why you can't go back. We now have, we've had for a while people who are sort of on the edges of the, uh, what's the, the edges of the mainstream, I guess we'd say. We have a guy called Professor Hankel, and we have a guy called uh, Streitschneider, I think. We have a number of people who have been preaching the idea that it's time to get rid of the euro. Well, it turns out now that we have a a group of uh, mainstream guys. We have a group of European economists, including Hans Werner Zinn, S-I-N-N. Now, he's the president of IFO, IFO. IFO Institute is uh, an economic think tank, and it has a kind of a semi-official status in Germany because it's it's the uh, – Instead of having a, only a, a sort of a White House Council of Economic Advisors, Germany also has the so-called five wise men. And the five wise men are the five leading economic research institutes, five leading economic think tanks. And one of these is the IFO. So here we have the president of IFO, Zinn, S-I-N-N, Zinn, uh, and his original proposal is – uh, it's, it's, he says it's not possible for Greece to avoid default uh, if it stays in the euro. Now, again, default, I don't think default is the worst thing. <laughs> we want to save civilization. Forget the default. But he says, since he's really arguing, since avoiding default is the main thing, what we have to do is uh, have Greece secede from the euro. They should go back to the drachma, and they would leave the euro. And they would go back to the Greek drachma, and then they would devalue the drachma radically, and that would reduce the international value of all their debts so that they could pay. Now, this is uh, economic insanity. I'll be back to this in a minute on World Crisis Radio.